Good Citizen Television, on to our second feature of the evening, and thousands of refugees in Dadaab are staring at further reduced food rations as funding from donors and humanitarian agencies continues to diminish. At the moment, the World Food Programme can only afford to give 80% of food rations to all the refugees, but that figure will go down to 50% in the coming months. Well, this is according to the head of office at WFP in Dadaab, Sarah Borchers. It is as a result of significant reduction of funding from international donors and the ongoing emergency crisis in other parts of the world. Well, these challenges will most definitely affect children who are malnourished in rescue and medical centers. Nimrod Tabu now reports on the second part of our series, Dadaab Diaries. Rainfall has arrived in some parts of Somalia and even other parts of the northern Kenya and even other countries in the Horn of Africa. But sadly, the damage has already been done. The region's worst drought in over four years has killed thousands of animals and has left millions of people severely affected by drought. The effects of that drought is being felt hard here in Dada. At the Dadaab refugee camp in northeastern Kenya, pressure is piling as thousands of refugees fleeing drought and hunger arrive from neighboring Somalia. Food is the most critical need in the expanded refugee camps. These huge tents at the IFO 2 camp act as storage for tons of food stuff donated by the World Food Program. Aid workers anticipate a huge number of refugees will show up to get their food rations. We've included more than 100,000 additional POCs, persons of concern, into our feeding manifests. So that's over 100,000 people that have arrived just in the past nine months. I was in all four camps, uh, and I'm happy to say four camps now, standing in IFO 2, because now we are no longer three camps. We're now opening today the fourth. But when I was in the camps this week, what we were seeing and hearing from the community is that on top of those that have been profiled and registered, there are possibly 50,000 or more people that have arrived over the past couple of months that are not included in any list, any, any manifest. Refugees here must produce the identification and food ration cards given to the refugees upon arrival in the country. Verification helps to prevent attempts by members of the host community to access food rations meant for the refugees. When we saw the numbers that we were seeing across the previous three camps, we were starting to have some serious security and protection issues in terms of being able to carry out a food distribution in a dignified and safe way. Uh, you imagine you have X number of sheds, uh, you know, 130,000 people right now in Dagahale. Um, having those households go through the sheds in the maximum number of days that we are allowed is nine. It, it, it was too many, too many people. At the point of profiling, it is believed we also had Kenyans coming in in search of uh, food um, because of the famine. And uh, like you rightly uh, point out, Nimrod, the issue of climate change is hitting everywhere. Elderly persons, women, persons with disabilities are given priority. The rations are also distributed according to the sizes of families. Each individual, regardless of their age, uh, gender, everyone receives the same uh, amount of food uh, and, and that is then broken up by household size. So we give cereals, we give pulses, we give vegetable oil. Uh, for children under two, we also provide specialized nutritious products uh, and, and those are, it's dependent on your, on your household size. Sarah Borchers is the head of operations of the Wild Food Program in Dadaab. She reckons that this year, the new influx of refugees is giving many humanitarian agencies sleepless nights. So here, just in Garissa County, uh, we have provided cash transfers to more than 24,000 households uh, just in this county. And it's really targeted at those Kenyan families that are feeling the greatest impact from this drought. In recent months, 
Drought and famine have overtaken civil war and clan conflicts as the cause of refugee influx into Kenya from Somalia. We are also in very you know, long-term plans to build up self-reliance and livelihoods, working with the government of Kenya, Garissa County, working with our partners uh, to look at, for example, water harvesting, rainwater harvesting. How do we provide uh, fresh water and, and dams that will give people opportunities to produce agriculture, to you know, provide for their livelihoods. Um, and, and so we are really focusing on that while we're also dealing with the emergency. Donor fatigue too is setting in with fears that supplies may run low in Dadaab as a result. I'm sitting down with donors. The message first is thank you because we wouldn't be where we are right now if we weren't receiving the contributions that we've received. But that only goes so far. And with 100,000 plus new arrivals, uh, in addition to all that we're trying to do, of course, for the Kenyans themselves, we are very soon going to be looking at ration cuts. So we've built up to 80%. Uh, we don't have an exact figure about what we will be providing in July, but it will go down from 80%, unfortunately. It is for this reason that aid organizations all across the Adab are focusing on one thing, funding. We need support from various community, various entities, including the government, more involvement. They are involved in uh, providing uh, support to the refugee services. But it is important for us to also um, reach out to other partners to make sure that they are able to provide the type of assistance that we need. When it comes to feeding the refugees in Dadaab, the focus is not only on the elderly and middle-aged, but children too. Global hunger has reached its highest levels in modern history, and those being severely affected by it are refugees. Here at the RC Centre in Hagadera, aid workers are constantly grappling with new cases of severe malnutrition among newborn babies from the neighbouring Somalia. Hagadera, Fafi constituency, is where the International Rescue Committee Medical Facility is located. Inside the facility, there is one ward that is always given attention 24 hours a day throughout the year. The stabilization center is a center where we provide uh, treatment for severe acute malnutrition. And usually these children pre uh, presents with other complications. Some of the babies we saw here were severely malnourished, with some weighing almost the same weight they had at birth, and yet they are now 19 or 20 months old. Feeding them is a priority. We have a child uh, less than six months old, but a present is um, presents with congenital anomalies, right? We also have a child who also has um, hydrocephalus, right? We have children who presents with dermatitis. This is the severest form of severely malnourished children. For the aid workers here. Losing the life of a baby who has survived the long walk with his or her mother under the scorching sun from Somalia to Kenya is something that always breaks their hearts. I think the most painful thing is to actually see a child die who has been under your care. And uh, the health workers, uh, I mean, it's not the easiest thing to deal with, you know, the aftermath of a loss of a child who is under your care. And so, um, because even if you look at the trends of deaths in the stabilization center, for the last three years we are seeing an increase in, you know, um, deaths. Yeah. But just like the food warehouses we saw earlier, food stored at the IRC medical facility is diminishing very fast. The decision by donors to cut financial aid significantly has had a negative impact here too. We hope that donors will continue to contribute and that new donors will step up and provide but it's hard i mean with everything going on right now in sudan ukraine crisis continuing there's a lot more media attention on other crises in the world and not much attention here certainly for kenya much less dadaab for sarah humanitarian workers and other well wishers here it is now becoming a race against time to save lives of hungry refugees crossing into kenya in search of food Nimrod Tabu, Citizen TV, Dadab.